In this tutorial, we're going to talk about canvas size, image size, we're going to look at some uh, filters under filter, um, and so forth. So starting with canvas and image size. Um, as you can see, this is an image that I have, um, and um, it's, you know, uh, a leg. What we want to do is duplicate it so that it looks as though um, it's a full person with two legs. So what we need to do is the following. Um, look at the Layers panel, and you see that, that this image of the leg is a background image. And what I want to do is uh, click on this background image and drag it down to the Layers icon to duplicate it. Okay, so now if I hide that uh, duplicated layer, I have two layers of the same image. Now, uh, what I want to do is check the image size um, of this file. Uh, the shortcut of that is Command Alt I and it opens the window for you. So Command Alt and I. Otherwise you can go under image and image size. Okay. Um, and what image size tells us is basically the width and the height of this image and you know the resolution 72 pixels per inch and so forth. What we're looking for in this exercise is um, the width, uh, to be precise, because what we want to do is, uh, having duplicated this image, we want to then uh, flip it horizontally so that we uh, basically uh, create a full image of, of two legs um, and the person sitting on this bench. So um, what we need to do is see the width. The width is 756. Um, and so in order to get uh, twice this width, we need to mentally calculate 756 uh, times 2. Um, and then we need to add that width into um, the, the value of the width right here. Now, if we do that, so 70, 756 times 2 is 1512. Notice what happens if I enter 1512 uh, into width. Um, my height also is going to be affected because I have certain options checked here um, and we'll cover those later. Um, so I have a problem because actually I don't want my height to be affected. I only want my width to be added but I want my height to stay the same. So this means that using the image panel for this exercise is not the right thing. So hit cancel and open canvas size instead. So the difference between image size and canvas size is that the, the image size is basically the whole image, how you can uh, change the proportion of your image. The canvas size will allow you to increase either the width or the height uh, or both. Um, so you can take control of your canvas and the size of your canvas. The shortcut to get to the canvas size is Command-Alt-C or uh, image canvas size right here. Okay, and what we need to do, as you can see, is um, change 756 to 1512, which is twice 756. And then we have to look at this anchor. This is very important because um, we have to tell Photoshop the direction uh, where we want this additional 756 pixels added. So obviously in, in our case we want uh, an addition to happen on the right side. For the addition to happen on the right side we click on this left arrow right here. Okay, um, And then we hit OK and then you see that 756 pixels were added on the right side. So uh, just bear in mind again if I go to canvas size to add canvas from the right side, we need to click on the left anchor. Uh, to add ca canvas on the left side, we need to click on the right anchor and so forth. To add canvas uh, on top, we need to click on this bottom anchor and that's how it works. So it's the opposite of the direction you're choosing. Okay, now the reason why this is black is because we have the black color selected in the background of our color panel here. So we have red for the foreground and black for the background. If we wanted, for example, if we're more comfortable working with a white background, then initially before adding canvas size, we should have changed this um, basically to black and white. And again, let me show you um, a shortcut to doing that. If you hit the letter D, 
um, the, your color panel changes to black and white. And if you hit the, the letter X on your keyboard, uh, this, the switch happens between the foreground and the background color. So D um, will automatically change whatever color you have to black and white, and then X will uh, switch the colors from foreground to background. Okay, so now, uh, even though we have black, that doesn't matter because we have our layer duplicated. And what we need to do is obviously be on that layer and uh, click on it. Obviously, I'm on the Move tool because I just want to select my layer and move it to the right. So click on the layer, move it to the right, hold down the Shift key, you see, because otherwise my hand shakes whether we like it or not. So just hold down the Shift key and it snaps to the edges and then place it there. Okay, this is obviously not what we want. We, what we want is to flip this horizontally so that it looks like a complete shape. Um, and obviously stay on that layer. Go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. Okay, so beautiful. Um, uh, tricks, uh, cheating, I don't know what you want to call this, but this is basically things we can do with Photoshop um, you know we change so much in images nobody notices uh, but let me show you one small thing if somebody pays close attention they can see that the tiles right here something's odd with them right because the perspective on the left side and the right side is going you know uh, towards a horizon line uh, towards vanishing points but here there's something odd happening so somebody with a trained eye will notice this mistake um, but most people won't even pay attention to this. Uh, obviously, the purpose of this exercise is to learn how we can uh, add canvas size and, you know, complete a picture which seems to be cut in half. So this was one thing I wanted to show you. Um, another exercise is um, some uh, filter effects. So I have this file and um, it's basically a background image of a nice lake and the image of the bald eagle on a separate layer um, right here. So if I hide that, let me go ahead and call it eagle. Okay, so um, I have found this image separately and I uh, traced it with the magnetic lasso tool and I erased the background. Uh, and I placed the eagle right here so that it looks as if it's landing over, um, you know, uh, some some tree branch or something over the lake. So um, <clears throat> what we want to do is um, put the reflection of this eagle on the water. Okay. So how do we do that? It's uh, somehow similar to something we did in the previous exercise, basically copying the layer and flipping it and then doing something with it. Okay, so first of all let me copy the layer of this eagle, take the eagle down to the layer icon and duplicate it and let's call it oops, eagle shadow. Okay, and then we can drag it down holding down the shift key so that our hand doesn't uh, move. And uh, now we need to flip it vertically this time, not horizontally, okay? Because, you know, uh, you know how mirrors work and a, a reflection is, you know, the opposite of what you see. So uh, let's go to Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical. Okay, so far so good. Now, obviously, this doesn't look like a reflection. It looks like an inverted real eagle. So we want to uh, fix that. Um, the first thing we can do is put the opacity of this eagle down. While you're still on the layer, have the layer selected, go to Opacity, and then click on that slider and drag it down, let's say, to 64% um, or so, um, so that the image blends with the water. Okay, And then let's play with the blending modes. So the blending modes are right here. Uh, we covered them uh, last week with Maria Callas and so forth. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and not do it manually because I like working with shortcuts and I, I encourage you to do the same. So hold down the shift key and click on the plus sign. It changes to dissolve which is not nice. And then darken. Oh, not really. Multiply seems very nice to me. But let me continue clicking. Color burn. 
Um, actually, it's not a matter of nice or not, it's what's convincing. So which one of these eff effects is convincing? This is not bad either. Overlay. Soft light. Maybe this one's very good. Okay, I'm going to choose soft light and then stop here. So this is a very nice effect, I think, because it looks really like the reflection of the eagle on the water. Um, the eagle is blending with the water. Ob obviously, we reduced the um, opacity. Uh, one more thing we can do is create a, a, a blur uh, so that really it looks blend, blended with the water. Um, if I zoom in right now and we look at the edges of the feathers, um, they look, you know, uh, like real edges, but nothing in water look, looks that real, um, that sharp. So let's go ahead and, uh, oops, um, and add some blur. So we're now introducing the filter, the several filters, and there are so many, and there are so many nice effects. Um, let me take you to blur to begin with. And then, obviously, we have so many options of blur. Um, the one I use most is motion blur, which is um, right here because it allows me to choose the direction of my blur. In this case, I want um, a blur that is somewhat horizontal. So let me click on that. And then as you can see here, um, you can control this angle basically to choose the direction of your blur. So I'm going to choose something almost horizontal like this. Um, and then um, you can choose your distance. So how much blur do you want? A value like 469 pixels is too much blur we almost don't see we hardly see the eagle anymore so you have to pay attention uh, to the distance that you choose um, in this case I mean something around 8 is more than enough so this is a nice shadow you see it's convincing and obviously I can see it because I have preview clicked right here in the motion blur panel hit OK and then that's it. So who knows really that this is a manipulated image. Um, if I would see it, I would believe that it's a real eagle flying over the lake with its shadow reflected over the water.